This is the world that we are living in now. How can we change it? Is this the world that we want to leave behind? Can hydrogen be the solution? Finding the technology for newer and greener energy sources is nothing that's going to happen in the future. It's something that is already here. So what we need to do now is put together all the puzzle pieces that we have to form a complete picture, not only for us here, but for the entire world. One thing that became clear to me over this hydrogen discovery series, it was kind of a mental leap for me to realize that we're using energy that's already stored in the earth, that it's something that's already created. And now we've had to make the move to creating that stored energy. Exactly, but we have put the infrastructure in place with the solar farms and the wind farms and everything. So what we have to do now is to add on to this infrastructure with hydrogen. With hydrogen. Think of the offshore wind parks in Germany. These are huge wind turbines and they operate maybe one or two miles offshore. Not all of them are actually connected to the grid uh, currently. So they're running, producing electricity and nobody's using it. The idea would be in those locations to actually install electrolyzers to turn that fairly cheap renewable electricity into hydrogen. The resources we have today are not being used to their full potential. Hydrogen can step in here and it can focus on those parts of society that need large amounts of power. But so far we subsidize fossil fuels to have cheap energy for our needs. So it's hard for new tech to compete with a system that's been in place for 150 years. What we need from the government is a very ambitious environmental regulation. Because if we are honest, what do we observe? We observe that it is still absolutely legal to pollute. We can put CO2 in the atmosphere, we can put toxic particles in the lungs of the citizens. It is allowed. Imagine a regulation that will not be so complacent, regulation that would be much tougher in terms of environment. This would push the electric mobility, battery or hydrogen driven cars and trucks everywhere. And this will be the best signal that governments could give in order to really promote clean mobility. We've all experienced it. How hard is it to break a bad habit? And what about making a fundamental life shift? Now imagine changing the entire energy sector. We're not just talking about a little change here or there, but a massive shift in the way that we produce and consume energy. In medieval time, they said, we need to think seven generations in advance. So every thing we politically decide, every step we take will have long during consequences. This is the case for hydrogen as we have, unfortunately, not electrified the world in the 20s of the last century. We knew about hydrogen already, but oil, gas were cheaper. We failed to do something for our next generations. I believe that hydrogen will play an important role in our future energy system, both in Germany, but also worldwide. If we want to do the energy shift, we have excess energy, which is extremely cheap, produced from renewable energies in certain times of the year. But it does not help to load an electrical car in the winter time or in the night time. So we need to shift it. We need a solution for this task. And again, this is hydrogen. Creating a hydrogen society is all about fostering an ecosystem of renewables. And in order to do this, we need governments to change and act and focus on renewable energies. Germany and EU already announced that they will go for hydrogen society. And they have made a specific targets. They made specific organizations. And I think 2020 is the starting year of hydrogen society and I'm very excited. And our strategy is to create an entire emission-free ecosystem. 
We want to connect the dots and offer integrated eco mobility solutions in almost all areas, not just mobility, also for maritime applications, energy storage, hydrogen generation, and so on. Hydrogen has the potential to work in many areas. It's a misconception to think that hydrogen is only for cars. We will need hydrogen for sectors that are now heavily dependent on fossil fuels, like ships, trains, and airplanes. We will also need to shift power-hungry industries like steel and cement away from coal and nuclear power so we can really achieve a green society. But having access to green energy is also important for our everyday life. From the first day, I was working with renewable energies and highly motivated to deliver energy to the people because, in my understanding, it is the fundament of democratic society and of wealth. But I also had always a desire to enable the people to take their own choice and to have an influence on their everyday life. I think what Mr. Abul Ella is saying here is extremely important because it's not only about the whole society, it's about you and me and how we are consuming energy. I think producing green hydrogen is the future. I think in some several years, if we can show successfully that this uh, model can work, um, it will be a game changer. Um, the people, they will use this hydrogen system and I think it's also for the environment, also for the economic, it will be a game changer. Don, we've learned so much. And I think my biggest takeaway is that a carbon emission future isn't in the future. It's a possibility that's here today, right now. Exactly, and cars are only the beginning. We have buses, trucks, planes, ships coming, and they will create a holistic infrastructure with green and renewable energies. I'm Nicole Scott, and this is Don Dahlman. And even though we have to say goodbye for now, we don't want to stop our journey here. We want to keep on looking at how we can change our lifestyle to be more green and sustainable using hydrogen. And we are convinced now that hydrogen will have a huge impact for all our future.